Hello cyborgs, it is 2018, it is a new year and new energy and all that fun things. New hair. Before we get into today's video, I do want to say just a couple things. Number one, I'm sorry there was no video last week. There was going to be and I started editing it and it honestly was just crap. And so I scrapped it and here we are. The second thing I want to talk about is Logan Paul and all of that. I'm not really going to get into it on this channel because I'm going to talk all about it on my new episode of my podcast, which is coming out next week, which would have been out this week, but I'm bringing on an assistant, so I have to train her and that's just, it, my schedule's kind of doing this right now. So I just want to say thank you for your, your patience and understanding and we're here now, it's 2018, we're going to kick some ass and I've got plans for more new music and more new content and just... Good vibes. So with that out of the way, let's actually get into the educational part of this channel. This week, we're talking about the 10 most common mistakes pop songwriters make. So strap in cyborgs and let's blast off. Konnichiwa Cyborgs, I'm Jonathan Miller and welcome back to Jonathan Miller Music helping you become a better songwriter. I make futuristic and outer space inspired electro pop music and every Wednesday, well, I try every Wednesday, to help other musicians take their music to level two. So if that sounds good, consider subscribing. If not, you know what, I don't blame you because I say every Wednesday, but lately that clearly has not been the case, so I'll let it slide. Anyway. Number one, using the same words over and over again. If you're writing a song and you feel like you've said everything you want to say in the first verse, you probably should like not. Or if you feel like you're saying love, 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 and your song is called Refrigerator, um, might want to fix that. <laughs> no, honestly, when you're writing a bunch of songs over and over again, it can feel like you're saying the same words over and over again. So that's when you pay a nice little visit to thesaurus.com and look up some new words. Or if you're like Lady Gaga, you can just dip into a second language and randomly put it in your song and call it a hook. Number two, having your songs sound too familiar to one another. Before I wrote my song, Finally Off the Elevator, I have often said that there was a period of time where I felt like I was writing the same song a hundred times. And you know what? Looking back at all those songs, I can safely say that was correct. If that happens to you, my best advice would be try using a different verse chorus format. Try a different song pattern, see if that helps and mix it up and see how that goes. Because even though they were hits, nobody really wants what happened to Ariana Grande with Problem and Focus. Sit down Ariana Grande fans, we make fun of everyone here. Now, pop songs tend to be repetitive and hooky and for, for some people that bothers them, but there is a thing such as too repetitive, but there's also a thing as not being repetitive enough. Pop songs especially are always rooted in home notes and home hooks, something that kind of takes you back in a cycle of like a root note. But we all know that Justin Bieber's Baby is criticized for using Baby, 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 Oh. And granted, it was a big hit, but you know what? Still, there is such a thing as too repetitive, but don't forget, you do want some repetition in there to give the ears a little bit more to hold on to. Number four, your instrumentation is kind of boring. Songs are all about peaks and lows. Your verses and your bridge are going to be a little bit lower energy than your chorus, especially in pop or EDM or electronic music. If your instrumentation is boring and there's nothing really going on, try changing up the drums or the rhythmic patterns. Try adding some sort of harmonic sound in the background. Try a different pad. There's all sorts of things you can do to give your instrumentation more life. Don't do what I did in the past and you just have the same few notes repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat and call it good. Number five, one of the biggest mistakes you can make is not writing enough. Three songs a year, bitches, don't count. You gotta work at it. Keep writing and hone your craft and allow words to fly out of you. And if they're not, you know, take a break, try something different to alleviate when we get that writer's block. I've done a video about that if you wanna check it out on the channel. But just write your ass off. Continue writing and writing and you will get better. It just it just takes practice. This next one I know is gonna come back and bite me in the ass from my brother who's probably gonna watch this. Not getting feedback on a song versus being overly critical of a song. 
I will admit some of my songs I think are diamonds and we all do it and we're like no you're a piece of shit my song is amazing don't tell me any differently sometimes it is okay to ask for feedback and listen to people's opinions and see what they have to say and make adjustments accordingly but there is a thing as being too critical don't overthink it don't try to change every little thing and a word of advice don't be fooled by companies that offer to give your songs general public reviews look for criticism from your peers and those who write in your genre because they're gonna know what they're talking about made that mistake and i don't know why i wasted so much money and so much time listening to people that didn't even like my music so why am i listening to their opinion i make electro pop why am i asking this metal and rock person to critique my dance track. Makes no sense. Number seven, having a weak chorus. The chorus of an EDM or a pop song, electronic, whatever, there needs to be a lift. You need to have energy in there, even if it's a slow song. For example, if you're telling a story in your lyrics, your verses kind of need to be those detail stuff and then your chorus should be more of the emotion. In EDM, that comes from drops, from swells to noise sweeps. There's all sorts of stuff you can do to give your chorus kind of a little bit more cushion so it stands out. Nobody wants a magic harp chorus. Magic harp. Number eight, putting the title in the wrong place. This is kind of speaking to myself, but if you're trying to squeeze this really cool title that you have in a random part in the song and it just doesn't quite work, don't put it there. Most commonly, your title's gonna be in your chorus. I've seen it and put it in sometimes in a verse or a bridge, and that lyric that it's attached to outside of the chorus usually has some big prominent reason why it's there. You just have to be careful. Good places to put it if you don't know what else to do, put it at the beginning of your chorus or at the end of your chorus. That will draw your audience in and they'll remember it. Number nine, when your story isn't clear. This one is a little weird because I don't want you to take me too literal. I've worked with songwriters that have to literally spell everything out for their audience. And I've also worked with songwriters that are incredibly abstract. Both can be fine depending on what your goal is of the song, but it's a general rule to kind of find a good middle ground. As I said before, in verses, you're gonna kind of want to stick to more of the storytelling. For example, in country music, I feel like they do this really well, where the verses really tell the story and they they paint a picture or a timeline and then the chorus really amplifies their feelings and how that situation made them feel whatever the message is of the song pop music does this too it's usually a little bit simpler because it's more commercial and it tries to be more widespread I know from my experience when I'm stuck on trying to tell a story I usually go listen to a country song and it kind of reminds me oh I need to put this here or arrange this here at the same time don't add too much detail you do kind of want to allow some some wiggle room for the audience to kind of absorb what their feelings and their interpretation of the song. So just try to find a nice balance and make sure your overall message is clear. The last mistake I see songwriters make is only writing for the masses and not really connecting with it themselves. We all know that there are songs out there that sound like they were written by a machine. Don't just write a song for the masses. Don't forget to put your originality in there, put your signature in there, make the song your own, and don't just write it like a machine. And trust me, your listeners will know. So those are some common pop songwriting mistakes I see. If you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. I put out new videos every single Wednesday. Well for the last couple of weeks. Also, what are some common songwriting mistakes that you've seen? Leave me a comment below letting me know. And I guess that is gonna be it this week. I'll see you next time. Matane!